Indeed, God has proven over time that he wants to share an intimate relationship with all human beings, young and old, believers and non-believers, male and female, everyone he created in his image. He first displayed this in sending his only begotten Son to be the propitiation for our sins. God would have been fully justified to allow mankind to go to hell. But our God is not only a God of justice, he is a God of love, and put his plan for restoration of humanity's relationship into action. He further demonstrated his love for communion with humans by sending us his Spirit in the New Testament, specifically on the day of Pentecost. And to date, God is still longing for a genuine relationship with every soul. Time and time again, in the Bible, we see God speaking to his people. Exodus 33 verses 9 to 11 And it came to pass, as Moses entered into the tabernacle, the cloudy pillar descended and stood at the door of the tabernacle, and the Lord talked with Moses. And all the people saw the cloudy pillar stand at the tabernacle door, and all the people rose up and worshipped, every man in his tent door. And the Lord spake unto Moses face to face, as a man speaketh unto his friend. And he turned again into the camp, but his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, departed not out of the tabernacle. We live in a generation where people are seeking guidance through methods the Bible has instructed us not to be involved in. People are looking to the stars for guidance. People are going to palm readings for guidance. People are attending rituals and many other forms of spiritualism that attempt to connect people to some other source of higher power. After I became a pastor, I was shocked at the volume of Christians that attend church regularly but yet they are still involved in these activities. I am here to tell you that you don't need to go anywhere other than to God Almighty. God still speaks to his people. He is not silent. He is alive and well and he can speak to you. You don't have to go to foreign gods. You can know God personally. Too often, people attempt to box God in a square and say that God can only do this or God can only communicate like this. But the truth is, God is God, and He is higher than us, and His ways are beyond human understanding. And He answers to no one, and He can choose to speak to whom He wants to in whatever method He wants. Humble yourself and always pay attention and listen. It is essential to note that it is not yours to dictate to God the ways and techniques He must use to speak to you. A lot of people hinder the Spirit of God by restricting Him to a method they admire. Some people prefer that God speaks to them through dreams and visions, so when they sleep, they position their hearts in a way that makes them see dreams that may not necessarily come from God. For some, their preference is still God's audible voice. They keep on expecting and expecting till the devil begins to manipulate their desires. Also, some people prefer to inquire from prophets. For those categories of people, you see them kneeling before the pastor at every instance they get. But I've come to tell you that God cannot be restricted. He knows the best method to use per time and per circumstance. Therefore, in order to hear God correctly, you must always pay attention. Paying attention means giving up self and allowing the free flow of the Spirit. You must pay attention to your thoughts. God can place a thought into your mind, and also the devil can place a thought into your mind. Therefore, you must pay attention to your thoughts. You must pay attention when studying the Word of God. You must pay attention to the terms the shepherds and God has placed over you. We need to understand that God speaks to us through various means at different times and on different occasions. 
These means include his audible voice, our renewed mind, his word, through his servants, through dreams and visions, the human consciousness, and many others. Also, out of all these methods, the most common way God uses to speak to us is through his written word. One thing that I have noticed is that people who have been deeply entrenched in other religions from birth, per se, one method of conversion to Christianity which I have found to be common is through dreams and visions. But that is not what we are going to be dealing with today. The question is, how can I listen to God, speak to my spirit? 1. Be regenerated. The first benefit that every regenerated soul enjoys is the communion of the Spirit. The Bible says, God is Spirit, and they that must worship Him must worship Him in spirit and truth. What do I mean by a regenerated soul? The new birth. The Bible makes us understand in John 3 verses 5 to 6, saying, Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. A regenerated person is a person born of the Spirit of God. He is a man or woman of the water, through the word preached from the Bible, and the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, whom Jesus promised all believers, the Comforter. 2. Meditate on God's Word There is no substitute for the Word of God. Meditating on God's Word still takes us to the point of being born again. Only a born-again believer will understand to take delight in the study of God's Word. The natural mind cannot. Meditating on God's Word keeps you in constant communion with God. The more you dare to know more of God, the more He reveals Himself. Psalm 1 verse 2 But His delight is in the law of the Lord, and in His law doth He meditate day and night. Psalm 104 verse 34 My meditation of Him shall be sweet. I will be glad in the Lord. Psalm 19 verse 14 let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Meditating on God's Word is thinking about His Word. Meditation that is taught in other religions is about emptying your mind, but this meditation is about filling your mind with God's Word. How can I meditate on the Word of God? You must first impose a discipline on yourself, and through the process of time, the discipline will become a habit, and then eventually, it becomes a character. Take time to meditate on specific verses. Even if it is for a week, spend the week pondering that one verse. I remember a few months after I first preached this message, a young man took this message literally, and he meditated on the chapter 1 Corinthians 6, and whenever he was presented with the temptation or opportunity to commit sexual immorality, 1 Corinthians 6 would come into his mind. And he was able to overcome the temptation. The young man said it was as if he would be reminded of this specific chapter. It was for him God speaking to his spirit. What he told me reminded me of Psalm 119 verse 11. Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. Even if you look into your own life, how many different situations has the word of God come into your mind? And in some instances, you listened to it, and in other instances, you didn't. The word of God can become a part of your everyday life, but you need to read the word of God. You need to meditate on it. Don't be in a rush to meditate on it. Allow it to be hidden in your heart and God will speak to your spirit. God will speak to you through his word. For instance, I got into an argument with my wife yesterday. Every marriage has arguments, but I was so upset and angry and I just didn't want to talk to her. 
She apologized for what she did, but I was still angry. But the more we sat in silence, the more these verses played in my mind. Matthew 6, verses 13 to 15. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever. Amen. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Over and over again this verse was playing in my mind, and I had to forgive her. I wasn't even able to be angry for ten minutes. It was as if the voice of God was ministering to me. The Word of God will minister to you in your life, and it will change you. So, how can I listen to God speak to my spirit? Meditate on His Word.